Hi there, uh, my name is Yoni Friedhoff. I'm an associate professor of family medicine at the University of Ottawa. And today I wanna to thank uh, Obesity Canada for inviting me to give this little talk. And it's something that I've been thinking about, unfortunately, for about a year now, since the first time I started seeing reports about obesity being a marked risk factor for more severe COVID. And the question that I wonder about is whether or not obesity physiologically increases the risk of more severe COVID, or if that's just what people want to believe. Now, as far as disclosures go, I have a few. I'm the co-owner of the Bariatric Medical Institute and Constant Health. Uh, Constant Health received an unrestricted clinical grant from Novo Nordisk to deliver its program uh, to uh, people across Canada. Um, the Bariatric Medical Institute has clinical program funding from Ontario's Ministry of Health. Uh, I do receive royalties. They're very small, but I get them from Random House for the Diet Fix, Why Diets Fail and How to Make Yours Work. Uh, I think the most important conflict I have or disclosure I have is that I do publicly state my opinions quite regularly on my blog, uh, in media outlets, including the New York Times, Medscape, Globe and Mail and Maclean's. And of course, on social media, especially Twitter. And I think stated public opinions are, in fact, a very large source of conflict that people don't speak about often enough. And so I wanted to make sure that they were highlighted here. And so why don't we start with uh, this uh, news report that came out just uh, a few months ago, actually, where it stated that the CDC found that 78% of people hospitalized for COVID uh, were overweight or had obesity. And I won't spend too much time on this headline other than to say that in 2019, it was estimated that 73% of the United States population uh, have BMIs, which would classify them with overweight or obesity. But of course, this notion that uh, obesity is responsible for the most severe cases of COVID and is driving the pandemic is one that has been adopted by society as a whole. Here is... Uh, story out of the New York Times. Again, just about a month ago, the pandemic is a wake-up call for personal health. Too many Americans fail to take measures to combat obesity, the second leading risk factor for death. Uh, and of course, the article in this one and in other ones talk about weight management and the treatment of obesity as if this is something that people haven't been trying for um, millennia and that this particular story actually went so far as to state that dealing with obesity is not rocket science. Those are the it literally stated it, it was not rocket science. Um, and also notably, it didn't mention uh, the use of drugs or surgery even once in a story that is trying to suggest that obesity is everybody's fault and that we should just fix it ourselves and it is our wake up call and perhaps now we will do so. And to be fair, there are, in fact, plausible mechanisms by which obesity may predispose people to more severe courses of COVID. Uh, this was a nice overview, although it was published in the fall and things change quickly, but this was a nice overview uh, in science that you could look up and download uh, why COVID is more deadly in people with obesity, even if they're young. It spoke about mechanisms, including inflammatory mechanisms and immune-mediated mechanisms and I guess the, the issue, though, is that are these outcomes truly a consequence of the physiology of adipocytes or is there something else at play? And I think that there is something plausible that might be at play, and that is weight bias and discrimination and how that may impact on the care of a patient and the course of a patient with obesity navigating COVID. And so in regard to the course of a patient's care, we know from prior studies, uh, including this one, looking at the impact of weight bias on people with obesity in terms of their presentation to healthcare providers and how weight bias from the healthcare community has in fact led many people to delay seeking care. And so perhaps people with obesity, consequent to lifetimes of experiencing weight bias at the hands of health professionals, perhaps they present to the hospital at a different uh, stage than people who do not have obesity, which might affect the disease severity and course. 
course, it's not just the presentation that might affect disease severity and course. It's also possible that people with obesity may be admitted to the hospital or to the ICU at different rates or speeds than people without obesity, or perhaps there are different criteria involved. And we know that treatment when it comes to COVID uh, right now, one of the things that is still being done uh, for patients is proning people in the ICU. And certainly early in the course of this disease, uh, this was one of the most commonly uh, performed interventions in the early days, which is when many of the studies looking at mortality risk and obesity and COVID were published and collected. And it's very probable that when it comes to people with severe obesity, uh, proning might not have been completed at the same rate or at all, or perhaps it might have been more challenging or delayed due to staffing because of the short staffed nature of ICUs that are overrun and the number of people that might be required to properly prone a patient with severe obesity. Whether this might have impacted on outcomes for people with obesity, I suppose would have to do with how much of a benefit proning had for patients with respect to COVID and uh, survival. We also know that there is in fact precedent for people with obesity being systematically managed differently during the course of a pandemic. And that comes from the H1N1 pandemic, uh, where uh, between 2009 and 2011, uh, patients with obesity, just like now with COVID, were found to have a much higher risk of mortality. That is, until the researchers controlled for something quite important. I'll go to their results section. The researchers looked at 22 articles with over 25,000 laboratory confirmed patients and that the pooled estimates did in fact estimate that obesity significantly increased the risk of fatal and critical complications of H1N1 infection. However, that increased risk disappeared after adjustment for early antiviral treatment. What that means is patients with obesity were less likely early on to receive antiviral treatment. And when, in fact, it was controlled for that disparity, the difference in fatality rates and severity rates and critical complication rates disappeared. People with obesity were discriminated against systematically, whether it was conscious, unconscious, implicit, explicit. All I know is that we have a precedent here for people with obesity being treated differently. Could this be happening with COVID? You know, there have and are treatments for COVID to try to minimize the severity of the disease, uh, from steroids to monoclonal antibody cocktails. Could people with obesity be facing a different metering out of these particular therapeutic interventions in ICUs? in hospitals, and in turn, could that be part of what's responsible for the known increased risk associated with obesity and COVID? And then there's the issue of how much risk we're really talking about. And so when it comes to obesity and COVID risk, the risk really starts rising at around a BMI of 35, and only dramatically so at a BMI above 40 which is a fairly small percentage in total of people with obesity. Yet, of course, all of the news reports, all of the media reports would suggest to everybody that, in fact, even at lower BMIs that perhaps might be definable medically as uh, or classifiable medically as obesity, uh, that there is a real issue there. Now, below a BMI of 35, we know that the risk is comparable to chronic heart or lung disease, cancer, dementia, and is markedly less than the risk that's associated with being older than 50, being black or Asian, being an immigrant or a refugee, or having a low socioeconomic status. It is far riskier to be growing up in the neighborhood that you can see in this picture here, which is one of the hardest hits, hit neighborhoods uh, COVID-wise in Ottawa, uh, than it would be to have a BMI less than 35 and facing COVID. 
If we ignore for a moment the issues of interpreting odds ratios from this model causally, which is probably a good idea. But even then, the association between obesity and death doesn't exceed race until a BMI of greater than 40. In fact, BMIs of 35 have the same odds ratio as uh, having any ethnicity other than being white. Uh, certainly in one of the first or the highest uh, deprivation quintiles. And controlled diabetes has the same risk as somebody with a BMI of 35. Again, we really only see things start changing with a BMI of 40 or above, and yet it is this constant clarion call in the media that this is a, an emergency, which in turn, I think, fuels more weight bias. It leads to articles suggesting that this is an easy thing to fix, that this is the fault of the individuals with obesity. It does not help anybody. And it's probably also worth briefly mentioning that if all of these scary articles do inspire people to try to actively lose weight during this pandemic, that there is no data at this point to suggest that the body's state during an active phase of weight loss is a necessarily helpful or more importantly, safe place to be when facing uh, COVID. It is possible that being in an active weight loss phase might make matters worse. We simply don't know. But we do know something is uh, true. We know that there is this association between especially people with severe obesity and uh, more fatalities from COVID and more severe cases of COVID. And we know that we've had a challenge as a society prioritizing people with obesity uh, for vaccination. Thankfully, uh, in Ontario, we are seeing in phase two, and perhaps it should have been earlier, but seeing in phase two uh, the inclusion of patients with BMIs greater than 40 on the vaccination uh, um, prioritization list, which is, I think, important. I know that I've counseled patients about trying to go and get themselves in line. And interestingly, too, I will mention that some of them, hearkening back to what we were talking about, about reticence to seek health care, uh, having faced weight bias in their lives, many were anxious that they were going to go and they were going to be judged and or weighed in public to confirm that they had BMIs greater than 40. And so this notion that uh, BMI and obesity might affect care in a way that increases risk of COVID is very real for those patients. And so all this to say, regardless of whether this is physiology or weight bias or a combination of the two of those things, there is zero doubt we should be prioritizing patients for, with obesity and severe obesity, especially for vaccination. Uh, and this is an issue that I think requires a great deal more investigation, just as was done following the H1N1 crisis. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.